science or something. Asura technology. Astounding and inventive. All right, we're back. It's been a while, guys. It's genuinely been about two, maybe even three we weeks since I last recorded. Uh, and the reason for that is I've been letting the videos go up online to catch up to where we are now. So it's currently April, and I think the last videos I did were at the end of March. And uh, yeah, it's been really cool. Lots of you guys are sitting about enjoying watching the series. Uh, I'm really, really happy that it's taken on. You guys are enjoying the adventures we're on so far. And uh, yeah, it's time to, now that the videos online have caught up with the background, Log I'd created for myself. It's time we get to keep going. So I might be a little bit rusty, but uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure I remember exactly where we were. And we're going to start with a couple of interesting little side things. Uh, first of all, now you'll notice uh, last episode we had just joined the Order of Whispers. We were hanging out with Tibble, and we will continue that here today. But I wanted to show you a little something that we'd unfortunately missed before. We're currently in uh, Metrica province again. We're back up the Tarnished Coast. In the weeks that I've had off, I've been relaxing with the Statics crew back at the uh, college chilling out and I want to show you guys something so in the north of this map there's actually uh, a meta event and uh, several hearts and stories to do with these power lines that run through the top of the map now uh, the Thormanova reactor and the huge disastrous space-time explosion is a big part of the story here but the other part of the story actually takes place on this corner of the map which I never showed you before we've got some uh, inquest attacking us which we're uh, gonna just run away from here uh, it takes place on the other corner of the map so there's this big facility over over there which we'll look at later but I want to show you uh, hopefully I haven't come too far north or started the adventure a little bit early here I want to show you another building okay this structure over here this lab complex now it is not inquest here it is not secret agents of the arcane eye or anything like that here uh, it's just one of the crews there are many crews around this map um, unfortunately we didn't get acquainted with too many of them uh, and these guys are doing one of the most interesting Asurian things uh, in the lore I that I think is actually going on in the entire game. And it's to do with this floating cube here that you can see that's bouncing up and down. Uh, there's also a hero challenge over here, which we may as well do. Hero challenges equals more skills, more traits. Uh, so yeah, if we come over here, you'll notice that there's this energy pulse uh, that we can commune with. Massive amounts of energy flow through the luminate plant generators. Uh, it has enough power and potential to supply energy to an entire city, it says. And indeed, that's what's going on here. Oh god, so there's a, a lightning elemental here, a veteran air elemental that's going to attack us as we try to grab this. So we're going to have to kill him and get through. No worries, we've got tons of grenades and explosions we can just throw at him. Um, so yeah, that's basically what's going on. Those power lines you see in the north of this map are carrying currents and energy uh, from this plant. And they currently have a project underway, a potential. They are thinking about building another city, like Ratasum. Remember, we Asura came up from the depths of Tyria 250 years ago, and we settled at Ratasum, and we've built a great city here. But there were many great cities underground. Uh, and why haven't we made more than one on the surface, you might be wondering. Well, these guys have at least got the idea to do so. So here's a desk they've got. What are these things over here? Oh, they're bottles. Uh, if we actually speak to these guys... My crew is on the verge of... Uh, she says, we have an abundance of architects. We don't need more. Take your business elsewhere. And we say, well, I'm not an architect. And she says, disregard that then. I've been barraged with inquiries from prospective engineers and crewless hopefuls seeking a professional engagement on our project. We need no additional help, even with all the inquest intervention. So what's the project? At this conjuncture, we're manufacturing building materials and finalizing schematics for the city we're designing. It will rival Radisum in its size, complexity, and the perfection of its design. Okay, and you can speak to the apprentice, who says, Officially, I'm required to inform you that it's against regulations to distract me from my security duties. And unofficially? Unofficially, I implore you, please distract me. My robust mind craves stimulus. But you destroy a few weeks' worth of research once, and you're banished to guard duty. It was a minor setback. They're clearly overreacting. So what are you guarding? He says, data or equipment. Anything that might interest the inquest. This lab contains, or rather will contain, the core power grid for the construction of a new city in the same mold of Ratasum. Sounds like quite the undertaking. So, uh, really, this is not relevant for the rest of the story anywhere. Uh, not in the core story, not later with the expansions so far, though we may get an asuran based dedicated expansion at some point in the future. Who knows whether anything will come of this. Um, but yeah, that's what's going on the Luminate plant, and uh, we never really got to see in our adventures before. I think you're in that socket over there. 
I'm not going to stick my finger in that socket. You stick your finger in that socket. Are you crazy? I'm not going to stick my finger in that socket either. <laughs> These guys seem a little incompetent. I don't know whether they'll make it very far, but uh, there you go. So that's side thing number one I wanted to show you. Uh, side thing, thing number two is uh, back at the city itself. So let's waypoint back over. It'll cost us a little bit, but not too much. And uh, what I want to talk about is festivals. So there's another side to this MMO you guys might not know about if you're very new and you're using this series as a totally new player. And that's that in real time, planet Earth time, as the months roll by, sometimes the developers of the game, ArenaNet, drop in special festivals and updates that exist to provide content on a temporary basis. And so one of the festivals is actually live right now. This is really kind of weird to talk about because when I covered the original game in my original LP, uh, we had a similar moment for uh, Guild Wars 1 where we were at a city of the dwarves and Christmas was going and they had a Christmas festival known as Winter's Day. Well, currently we are under the influence of the Super Adventure Festival. Uh, and it revolves around the Asura. So you'll notice up at the top of the city here, this was not like this in the previous episodes. There was not a giant holographic golem standing stationary. There was not a weird peculiar portal with strange pixelated things. This is known as the Super Adventure Box. It's an Asuran invention created by this character here, Moto. And he says, there's no better time than the Super Adventure Box Festival to celebrate the Super Adventure Box. Your adventure awaits inside the box. And we can say, well, has anything changed? He says, I had a very brief moment to squash a few bugs and add small bits of polish. Your experience in the box will be better than ever. Thanks, Moto. So, I guess Bract knows about this already. It's a part of the city. If we walk up to this portal and we press F, it says, Lord Vanquish has kidnapped the princess. You must save her. And we can click, I'm ready. And we basically go, guys, into a virtual reality extra dimension that provides a totally different Guild Wars 2 experience. This is the Super Adventure Box. And so there is an entire, like, game within a game that you can play here based on platforming. It's kind of like an action platformer. Uh, it has inspiration or from uh, other RPGs. It feels kind of Zelda-like in a lot of ways. Uh, it's really incredible. One of the favorite uh, updates that's ever gone into the game. The community loves this thing. There's a ton of different things to talk about. It would be a let's play all of its own for me to actually cover this in depth. But there's different worlds you can go to, different zones. It's uh, pretty incredible. I'm not going to do that on this video here because, of course, we're going to be doing the main story. But I did want to dip my toes in just to give you guys a bit of a demonstration about the Super Adventure Box itself. And hey, who knows? Maybe one day I will have a full-on LP where Bract comes through and does his adventure in here at the same time. But for now, we're just going to do this sneak peek. It's really incredible. I encourage you guys to check it out and watch out for it when it is live uh, in Guild Wars 2 because it's not all the time. Not every day of the year, is it? But uh, for a few weeks, every year it will come back. So there you go. So, with all of that done, let's get back onto our adventure, shall we? We're going to be returning to Lion's Arch. We may as well take the Asura Gate. I haven't shown you this yet, I don't think. So I told him, new regulations stipulate you must remove your boots and belt before traveling. And he fell for all tyrants. Completely. He had to hold his pants up as he entered the gate. Wow, these dirty Asura. People are relying on them for these Asura Gates. We can speak to her, and she says, Do you have a question, or are you just going to stand there with your mouth agape? And we say, What is it? And she says, it's an Asura gate, of course. This particular gate will transport you to Lion's Arch. Asura gate? What's that? You're joking, right? Asura gates transport people and supplies all across Tyria. Step through and see for yourself. So there you go. Uh, yes, it would be very strange for Brack not to know what an Asura gate is at this point. We'll head on through and we will return to Lion's Arch. Where really, as I've mentioned before... All the storylines coalesce here. This marks the start of really the real story, the fight against the dragons. And from now on, we'll be spending an awful lot of time here. Uh, I think there is another Asura we can speak to on the other side. Magical. Just thinking aloud. Uh, and it's probably not her. She's just chatting about something else. There is an Asura gate worker here. Here you go. Um, gatekeeper Ruina, maybe? who we can say the odd thing to, but we don't have to worry too much. Uh, if we stand around for long enough here, the various NPCs at Lion's Arch will start talking about current expansion events. Story way down the line. Story many years older than what we're currently watching. So to try and not spoil that, <laughs> I'm going to run on through. This is kind of the main hub of activity for most players of the game. You're going to see 
pretty much everyone here is level 80 in end game gear. They have their minds and their objectives set on late game goals, uh, big difficult collections, raiding content, stuff like that. They're all gonna, you know, have tried to make themselves look as good as possible. You see tons of different mounts. Look at these mounts! It'll be a while before we get these guys, but we will have mounts eventually. So uh, here you can see a very lion looking griffin. Ah, so yeah, basically every time we're here, don't be scared to pause or look in the background and admire all the other players around because there will be a ton and we're just little old Brack running on through. Speaking of which, I did change the way we look just a little bit here. Um, I died us. I said I was going to die as red last episode to look a bit more like the inquest because we have our in inquest golem friend with us now. Uh, I decided to go orange to max our, match our headband, but I do have this rifle here. So this is an inquest rifle. This is actually a new set of weapons that just came into the game. Um, and I decided to go with this because I think it looks pretty cool. Uh, now, another thing I wanted to show you was the bug that allows you to see your weapon in first person. And so, uh, the way it works, guys, is you go into first... Oh, it's working anyway. But basically, you go into first person. There, there's our gun there. And um, you go to character select and come back in. And then for as long as you don't use a skill, you actually have your weapon with you. If it's a bow, it looks really good. Rifles, we tend to hold quite low. And as an Asura, we sort of have to look down to see. But sometimes it's really cinematic and really cool. So, uh, yeah, there you go. That's that. And um, without further ado, let's say we get into the story. Let's just quickly recap and remind ourselves what's going on. Order Neophyte. The remaining members of Destiny's Edge met, and it was explosive. The death of their compatriot, Snaff, caused some real rifts in the guild. It will take a lot to mend those friendships. So we've heard vaguely and loosely about the death of Snaff here, haven't we? Um, if you haven't read one of the books, you won't necessarily know too much about that just yet. But bear with the game, and we will see more as time goes forward. That mystery is not fully resolved, and don't worry if you feel a little out of the loop with it. Uh, so, yes, then we join the Order of Whispers. Stealing Secrets. We received a letter from Tybalt Leftpaw, who has been assigned to me as my new Order of Whispers contact. I had to meet him in Lion's Arch. I met Tybalt, and he's unique. I'll give him that. We've got a situation to investigate in Applenook Hamlet, north of the city, and I'll meet him there. Later, we wrote that Demi Beetlestone, daughter to Legate Minister Corticus of the Criter, asked the Order of Whispers to give her political asylum. That's interesting. Minister Corticus of the Criter? That sounds kind of strange. Um, implying she knew something about her father that was worth finding out. The Order lost contact with Demi somewhere in Applenook Hamlet, and it appears she'd been kidnapped by the Jackdaw Pirates. Um, so we rescued Demi and got her safely back to Lion's Arch. She's wait she was waiting at the safe house. I talked with the bouncer inside the tavern in Lion's Arch. With a proper password, I was allowed in to the secret Order of Whispers hideout. And Tibble and Demi arrived safely in Lion's Arch, but they were tracked via her enchanted necklace, and she has to be snuck out of the city again. So that's what happened, if you remember. She's wearing a necklace that was a gift from her mother. Her mother we don't know much about right now. And uh, it turns out Cordicus, her dad, had actually essentially corrupted and enchanted the necklace to be able to track her. So she came here seeking asylum, and all the Ministry Guard know she's here. So we got to get her out. And of course, when I say here, I don't mean here, here, this Lion's Arch. I mean Lion's Arch of a few years ago. We had a choice whether we sneak her out via decoy or via another thing. We went with the decoy. Yes. Let's see if Lady Wee's magic is as good as she said. Of course, I remember now. We had to transform Tibble, didn't we? <laughs> Here you go, look, Tibble. It looks good. It looks very good on you, Tibble. Wow. Learn me. I'm a human girl. Whoa, I've got two hands and some lovely apples. <laughs> Keep your mind on the job, Tybalt. Go roam the city and we'll see if the Ministry Guards take the bait. Wait, right. We order book passage in Demi's name on a ship called the Harpy's Smile. We'll head there and see what happens. Are you okay? Ministry Guards aren't like those drunken pirates. If they can't capture Demi, they'll kill her to stop her from talking. And that means... They'll kill me. Yeah, I know. But I didn't join the Order of Whispers to sit behind a desk. I joined it to fight dragons. If we're going to do that, we'll need Kryta and Queen Jenna. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Me, a char, risking my life for the security of the human throne. The world's a funny place, Lightbringer. As long as we keep laughing, I guess we're not dead. The Order gave me a mission, and I'm not turning back now. I can do this. Trust me. <laughs> this is brilliant. Oh, well. 
How do humans walk without tails? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Here goes. Nothing to worry about. Not weird at all. Look at me. I'm to be Beetlestone. Yes, you are. And aren't you very oh so pretty to me? Let's press F. So Tybalt <laughs> with the female face up here says, uh, if we ever do this again, Bract, you're the one getting transformed. You look great, Tybalt. Just hang in there. So here we're going to transfer, uh, move him through. I do like that he, as a char, is risking himself for the human throne. That really, that that's the story of how we're going to be able to fight against the Elder Dragons right there. I think there's also another really cool line here where essentially he said... Uh, if we're not laughing, then we're dead, or whatever that line. That basically sums up the Order of Whispers in Guild Wars 2. Which is kind of funny. The Order of Whispers were in the original game, also. Uh, but back there, if you guys remember, or maybe you didn't play, they were more like... See they were secretive, yes. They were stealth-based, yes. But they were more like badass demon hunters. So far, so good. That's Lady Beetlestone. Get her, now! as a faction. And so it's interesting to me that in Guild Wars 2, they went in a very different direction. Instead of going that badass demon hunter angle, they instead decided, yeah, let's, let's do kind of comic relief, uh, which isn't necessarily bad, but it is a big difference. Don't worry though, as the expansions go forward, we're going to learn a lot about the Order of Whispers and uh, maybe get some of that demon hunting in. Don't you guys worry about that. Oh my god, uh, Tibble actually knocked this guy down. That was brilliant. You did very well there, dude. Okay, cool. So, yes, the Ministry Guard are going to be trying to kill me here. Or rather, not kill. Capture, I guess. Head through the Agora. We've got a ways to go yet. But we obviously don't have to worry as much because Tibble is pretty goddamn uh, good at his job. And he's There's Demi Beetlestone. Get the trainer. potentially a much better fighter than Demir is. Yeah, you guys want some of this? Let's let's have it. Let's see how it goes. Oh, I've just remembered. There was another thing we were going to do, wasn't there? Right, so as an engineer, we get kits, right? And if I remember, last time, I did want to show you a new one. So we were looking at the grenade kit before. Let's check out the elixir gun. Arm yourself with an elixir gun that replaces your weapon skills. So first of all, we get the tool belt. It's called Healing Mist. We can walk over to Demi here, or Tibble, and uh, we can press this, and it just vents a bit of mist. Puts nice protection, uh, regeneration out, continuously healing him up, and it does that on all of your friends. At the same time, too, it's a stun break, so that's kind of nice. Let's equip the gun, though. So there you go, that's how the gun looks. I actually really like the Elixir gun. I think it looks pretty badass. So we have that there. And uh, yeah, we get a ton of different abilities. Let's uh, use them on more Ministry Guard. Back to casual. Probably gonna get jumped, but still, casual. All right, I'm acting casual. No worries. <whistles> we'll be fine. You betrayed your father, and you betrayed Kryda. No more. Get away! Come on! How do you know? How do you know? We were acting casual. Okay. Oh my God! There's so many. <laughs> uh, okay. So the auto tranquilizer darts. This puts bleed and weakness out on whoever we shoot with the darts. Okay. So we can only hit one person. It's kind of a very defensive weapon, the elixir gun. These tranquilizer darts, like, that weakness just reduces the damage they do to us by a massive amount. So, yeah. The skill two, glob shot. We can uh, fire a bouncing glob that whenever it hits someone, it cripples them. Or if it bounces to an ally, it gives them swiftness. So, let's see if we can throw a glob at that guy over there. There you go. There's the glob. And you see it bounce between us, like Portal 2 style. Did you see that? Uh, yeah, it will roll uh, protection and stuff around. Um, swiftness, sorry, and stuff around and quickness. Uh, cripple. My god, I can't speak here today. So there you go. That's glob shot. Not much damage here. Skill three is fumigate. Spray a cone of elixir fumes, inflicting poison and vulnerability. We're actually getting really hurt here. I need to dodge away. Uh, <laughs> uh, curing conditions as well. So here's fumigate. This is one of my favorite skills on the elixir gun. So we get like this just poison gas we can throw out. Look at all the, the condition damage we're able to do here. We need to rocket boots away. This is really bad. Let's throw our med kit stuff down. Huh. And then grab it. And eat this stuff up to heal ourselves the best we can. We're actually dying. This is so bad. Throw an elixir. The elixir B. All right. Another fumigate. There you go. They're almost dead. Uh, so that's the first three skills. Skill four is acid bomb. Which... Uh, we launch ourselves back, exploding a bomb of acid at our feet as we do it. And that continues to do damage on the ground wherever it lands. Okay, so let's fumigate these guys down as well. I should probably use combat mode, actually. Combat mode will be really good for this. Yeah, we can, like, properly shoot the darts around. Oh, that's too good. I should have used combat mode the whole time. Yeah, so acid bomb, I'll show you this here. So, ready? 
we drop it down and we splat all this goo here and that actually does really good damage flat damage that's really nice it's also a blast it's unblockable so if they're like sh if if you imagine Tyrix, right using his shield his shield five the acid just bypasses the shield completely it's uh, unblockable and then finally the best skill which we don't even have anyone to kill here yet super elixir we're making good time. Head through the Western War. Okay, okay, uh, Tibble, slow down. Trap didn't work. Get her. If she won't surrender, silence her permanently. Okay, so Super Elixir. Launch an Elixir Orb that heals allies on impact and creates an area of continual healing, which is also a light field. So we can throw it down there. And look, we can heal uh, Tibble up there as people attack him. And it creates this huge field. And for as long as we're in this field... We're getting Condi Cleanse, and it's pulsing heals out. So, if you use the med kit and the um, elixir gun together, there's actually quite a lot of support capability you can, in theory, do. According to the flavor of the skills. In terms of actual skill balance, that might not necessarily be the good idea, but that's the, that's the idea behind it. So, yeah, you get Super Elixir, and you'll notice, right, here we've got a field, a light field, and the acid bomb is a blast. So, if we do that, we can trigger more combo finishes, guys. Blasting in a light field means we cleanse even more conditions. So there's all kinds of stuff you can do like that. And uh, yeah, uh, you can run an engineer that's got like loads of potions and bottles and things that he smashes around his feet with the elixir gun too at the same time. When you start seeing our specializations, you'll find even more interesting things we can do with that. Uh, and you might even find that I need to use some of this stuff to get through the dungeons later. Obviously, the story right now isn't necessarily too super difficult. But moving on, let's keep going through uh, Lion's Arch. Tibble, you all right here? I love the look of the ships over there. Look at that. Look at the fog in the background. It's so nice. It's actually getting a little bit dark here as well. Long, narrow path between rocks, huh? That's not dangerous or anything. <laughs> no, it's fine. Well, look what we have here. Daddy's little traitor, that is. Get her! It's fine, all right? Look, we have the super elixir. It's not a problem. We can cripple them. We can... Oh, my God. He's just charged on ahead. Tibble, you nutter. Yeah, we'll give him a nice thingy there and heal him up. Let's use our elite as well. I can't even remember the last time we used this. Boom, we summon our golem. And we can shatter a, an elixir on the golem to give him swiftness and stab and stuff. We can support him, keep him alive. We can use our tool belt stuff, our rocket kick. So the acid bomb, we can drop at all of them there. And you see we're getting all these big red crit numbers. Like, that's a good way to play generally. Ball people up and then blow them up in, uh, you know. Oh my god, the, the golem actually did some good damage there. Uh, blow them all up in a single big thing. So this is probably the best Asuran Elite, this golem here. He does reasonably good damage. As you can see, he's doing the barrage and the volley there. And he can do that while we continue getting our skills. If you remember the battle suit from the episode before, like that's fun, but you may as well just summon this guy who's like uh, his own battle suit and he works with you. There you can actually see he despawned a little bit there. So that's good. The docks should be close now. Give up, Lady Beetlestone. Your father's invested a great deal of money in your return. Uh, I don't want to give up, though. You give up. Look, we've been knocking tons of your guys out. I'm choosing to believe here, guys, by the way. Since humans aren't necessarily bad guys, these guys aren't necessarily evil. They're just being paid to do a job here. I'm going to pretend that this is like when we dealt with the Arcane Eye in, at Garenhof. Where we're, we're not killing these guys, alright? Look, I know that he fell on the floor there. We're just knocking him out, okay? Look, we actually kind of are just knocking him out. Look, look, look they're recovering. 5% health. They're just knocked out, okay? We're not evil. We're not a murderer. Here you get a beautiful monument. This is a monument to Kabaya Mariner. Uh, a character from one of the novels. It's actually all translatable, this text. I can't remember what it is anymore. Because uh, I haven't been able to explore this for a long time. But yeah, this is actually translatable. And you can even see a statue to Kabaya over there too. Before she escapes. Oh god, okay, these guys are coming back. Uh, Demi? Demi, where are you? Demi! I suppose I shouldn't call him Tibble openly out here. We have to continue to keep up the charade that this actually is Demi. Oh, that was so good, actually. Nice. Let's drop this down. So, like, rocket boots as well, right? Rocket boots are a blast too. So, we can super elixir and then rocket boots down uh, through them. And we can get combos and things like that also. So, that's pretty good. More fumigates. I'm curious, guys, in the comments what you think your favorite kit is so far as well. I've always loved the whole kit approach with engineers. That they get, like, the mo This isn't actually a weapon. The elixir gun isn't a really a weapon. But, and not just like the flamethrower isn't, or the grenade kit isn't. But through them, it's like the engineer gets, like, weapons 
the, much more unique weapons than all the other professions in the game just because they have this, you know? I think that's kind of fun. Uh, so there you have it. God, look over there, the waterfall. I wish I could go back and explore there right now. That's like a giant diving board you could jump down. Old LA is so, so pretty, so nice. All right, let's come through here. We're at the docks. There, of course, are the Asura gates in the background. We got these houses. To me, is this it? This is the harpy ship. Are we good? Captain Connery waiting for us. There's not going to be any more, more Minister Guard, are there? Keep going. Be on the lookout for a Captain Connery. Yeah, yeah, he's right there, mate. He's right there. Don't worry. Come on. I, I hope you get... I'm going to wait on this box for you. There's something cool I always like in fantasy games where you have, like, the diminutive race standing on boxes and sitting over the edges of things like that. There's Captain. There he is. Well, hello there, lovely. Are you here to board my barge? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, brother. I fought off ministry guards for this? Come aboard, miss. Right this way. It's a pleasure to have such a pretty young thing gracing the harpy's smile. <laughs> what a bold sailor you are. <laughs> I'm all a swoon. You really should be shot for making a girl blush so badly. I mean it, buddy. Shot. <laughs> uh, well, toodle-doo, everyone. I'll meet you at Storm Love Isle. I don't die of first. Don't worry, buddy. You did great. We're almost in the clear. And voila, beautiful. Throne off guard complete. We've got the Perido lump, an Amethyst lump, or a Carnelian lump. Let's go. So Ferocity, have I talked about what Ferocity is yet, guys? So Ferocity, so, so power just increases the raw damage you do. Precision increases your chance to critically hit. And a critical hit... By default, does 150% more damage than normal, okay? So, that's what a critical hit is by default. But if you get Ferocity, Ferocity increases that 150% even higher, okay? So, I'll demonstrate this here. We'll grab this lump. Let's have a look at our stats here, okay? So, we've got power increases our damage, okay? Uh, we have... Crit chance of a, so five percent chance to score a crit here, okay. And when we crit, we do one hundred and fifty percent more damage. However, when I slot this ferocity thing in, and we get a little bit more ferocity, you'll notice that our crit damage went up there to one hundred and fifty one point four. So the more ferocity you build, the higher your crits get. So it means that if you get a stat set that give you power, precision, and ferocity all at once. It's like just insane damage, and it's a beautiful stat set to combo together because all three benefit all three all at once, you know? Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that means we get to do a lot of extra damage there. We have a lot of different weapons and things. It's okay, guys. We will uh, we'll be done with our last uh, Ratasum outfit soon, and uh, as we're a member of the Order of Whispers, once we've proven ourselves and we meet some more of them uh, and we're done on the field here with Tibble, we will uh, check out some of their gear, and trust me, it's cool gear. All right, there you go, Connery, you scumbag. Never fear, a friend racked. I'll get your lovely lady to safety, mark my words. I'll never let her leave my sight. Oh, God. Better give her at least a little space. Thanks. <laughs> and Tybalt says, well, that's the dangerous part. Except now I'm a woman, alone, at sea, with a bunch of sailors. Hang on, I'm having second thoughts. <laughs> okay, and uh, I'll say, remember, to me is a noble of Kryta. Reputation will protect you. Right, I'll play up the noble angle and remind them who my daddy is. Yeah, all right, you'll be free before you know it, buddy. See you soon. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this is the harpy here. I wonder if we get any more dialogue. I always hate leaving these instances with Lion's Arch. Oh, it's okay. We'll have plenty more. There's, there's honestly so many. We'll, we'll get to go back to Lion's Arch of the past many times. Uh, so with Demi safely out, that t uh, sends Tybalt, by the way, to Storm Bluff Isle. Well, the real Demi snuck out. Uh, Storm Bluff Isle is an, an island to the south of Lion's Arch. It's just a little bit high level for us right now. See, the further south you go, the, the closer you get to the Elder Dragon Zaitan, the more dangerous the world becomes. So this map down here, this is a pretty deadly place. It's for level 45 to 55 people and over. And as we go even further south, you'll find swamps and horrible more dangerous places until eventually we get to ore all the way down there uh storm bluff isle isn't too far away it's like down here i think this is it here so basically tybalt's gonna sail from these docks five years ago or whatever and then he's gonna come here the other big notable island we heard about before was this one here 
which you'll notice is a level 60 island called Claw Island. And we heard a little bit about that before. This being the Wizard's Tower we saw recently as well. So there you go. Um, pretty nice. And I guess that leaves us now to uh, do what exactly? I g oh, wait. Hold on. We're going to Stormbluff Isle right now? I tell a lie. Yeah, I guess we go there immediately. I thought that we would have a little bit more time. We're only level 40, so we're actually going to go into dangerous territory now, it seems. Okay. Uh, so we got to go south of Lion's Arch. Wow. All right. Scratch that entire conversation there. Um, I guess when you're an Order of Whispers character... See, if we were a vigil character, we wouldn't be going into dangerous territory. We'd be going up north here into Gendaran Fields to a fortress we just missed earlier. Order of Whispers is a little bit more treacherous, a little bit more dangerous than the others, because it actually sends you into more da dangerous territory quicker. We're going to a level 50 area, despite the fact we're only level 40 right now. But I'm sure it'll be fine. We've almost leveled up again, actually, uh, so that's kind of nice. Um, so yeah, I guess today, since we showed off the Elixir Gun, we can maybe show off some other stuff. Uh, but there's more interesting things going on. God, everywhere you turn in this game, there's more interesting stuff. Isn't it obvious? The lights are eyes. We're pulling my tail. Look at the eyes. Tilt your head a little. Come on, I don't... Burn me, it's a stingray. I think they're talking about one of the statues or something here. Uh, so this, this surrogate here is a really profound surrogate. Let's see what this NPC says. Oh, they just offer directions. They're the lion guard here. Um, this is a really profound surrogate. This one won't take us anywhere in the real world. This will instead take us between dimensions to a place called the Mists. And indeed, what is known as the Heart of the Mists. So I'll just peek us in here just for a quick moment. Uh, there's really no story that takes place here, but the Heart of the Mists is a dedicated PvP area. And PvP in this game is great. It's really fun. There's a ton of infrastructure for it now. It's uh, been very competitive in the past. It could easily be very competitive again in the future with prize pools. I think I'm actually going to be covering as a side a, uh, a, a competition with a $2,000 prize pool coming up at the end of the month or the start of next month. Uh, PvP is a big deal in Guild Wars. It really is. Um, and it, oh, unlike other MMOs and other RPGs, uh, the devs take it very seriously and competitively in that they don't want you to have to grind for levels or gear to be able to play PvP. So what you see has happened here is I'm now somewhere completely different. I'm in the mists. This is a totally different world, guys, right? And all these little islands of existence, these are all different PvP maps that Bract could, theor in theory, go to and fight against people. I won't do a whole description of everything there, but uh, the other thing that's really interesting now is you'll notice at the bottom, I no longer have an experience bar, I have a blue bar, and this represents PvP progress. I'm automatically level 80 while standing here. It's maxed out my level, and it's given me access to basically any stats any runes, any sigils I really care about so that everyone is on an even playing field and everything's perfectly 100% viably competitive. You can see it's removed all my utility skills and I get to pick new ones. So uh, yeah, at any moment, even from I think as early as level 2, players can actually come here to the Heart of the Mists and you can spend thousands of hours as a Guild Wars 2 player exclusively, permanently, in this area of the game. Never looking back at the role-playing areas, never looking back at PvE. You could stay here at PvP. Um, I will have, hopefully, a separate series that is a full discussion about all of those features um, going up elsewhere on the channel. Hopefully, I'll remember to put a link in the description once it starts going up. But again, a bit like the Super Adventure Box, that's not really relevant to us here. It's just another facet of the game that I at least wanted to show so that everybody knows it exists. That's not the only one either, by the way. There are other competitive areas known as World vs. World, which is kind of like a mix of big open world PvP. And uh, so it's, it's sort of the middle ground between really competitive PvP and the big open world stuff. Uh, and those are the larger maps you saw, which is what all of these other surrogates, generally speaking, take us to. The last surrogate is this big one in the middle. Yeah, there's even more. And that is uh, important for its own reason, which we will get to later. The game will teach us about that last portal when we hit level 80. So don't worry about it. You don't have to bear that last one in mind just yet. It's not relevant for our purposes until a bit later. Here, by the way, look, it's a vigil uh, center house. I guess the vigil hangout here and just chill. That's kind of cool. 
There's like a million different areas we could go to. This city is just as big and complex and interesting as any of the others that we've gone to. Uh, but moving through, we've basically just taken a beeline here. We're going to be going south. Let's grab this here. And uh, we're going to come out of this portal now. So you'll see our adventure through Lion's Arch was just basically going a straight line down. And now we're going to go to the Blood Tide Coast. Where, hopefully, we can meet up with Tibble and... Uh, Finally, guys, I'll, uh, minor spoilers here. We're about to figure out where the Order of Whispers themselves are based from. And it's in a very sneaky, quiet, secluded area. It's not like the Dermond Priory with a giant fortress in the mountains. It's not like the Vigil with their own giant fortress on the edge of the mountains. This place is, uh, is a little bit more nuanced than that. And it's an extremely cool, exciting one. We'll have to do that next episode, though, guys, as we adventure further to the south of Tyria and we get into a little bit more dangerous area. Thanks very much for watching. I want to say as well, just before I close the video out, thanks very much again to everybody who's been watching these. Uh, I really appreciate it. And a, a small reminder to those of you, too, I hate doing this, but, um, if you are unaware, I do have, uh, a presence on the website Patreon where you can go to support me. If you do that, I give people perks. One of the main perks is I offer in bulk early access, ad-free, higher quality versions of every video I ever make. And that includes this Let's Play. So if you are craving for more at the end of these, uh, so many of you are leaving the comments saying you are. If you're craving for more, just remember, you can get access to them on Patreon. There's a link at the top of the description. Uh, and I kind of hate selling out and shilling in this way, but I feel like a lot of people don't know, know that that exists. Uh, yeah, there'll probably be tons of episodes waiting for you to watch right there. You can spend an entire afternoon watching all the way up to like episode 30 or something. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, so just a, a reminder for you all. If even just one or two people do it after I say this, uh, it was kind of worth me selling, my, selling out here. So... Whatever. But there you go, guys. Thanks very much for watching. Next time, we'll look at some new kits and things as well. What's the next kit we've got? Uh, sorry, kit training. Looks like it's the tool kits. If anybody's played Team Fortress 2 Engineer, you might have some uh, interesting insights on this one. We'll look at the tool kit next time. Thanks, guys. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time. I've met so many friendly little Asura here. Yeah, once you get to know them, they're very educated.